Hello. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The time is not, sorry, 6.24. It is May 23rd. I'm using the cell phone so you'll get better quality. I know the facial hair is not looking the best right now. Um, you know who this is. I'm not gonna go to the crappy intro. Um, I'm just gonna cut right to the chase and, and, you know, say, this is going to be one of, I believe, four heartbreak stories that I'm going to make. Um, all I'm going to say is, today, I'm going to let God talk right through and directly through me as I do these videos. Um, I tried to do a video with this phone last time talking about my first girlfriend and next thing you know my phone just something happened but if it don't work I'll go to the computer because I'm not letting this go in vain so here we go let's get started in the first video this is the seventh my last video said seven but no this is the seventh volume of the heartbreak series this one's going to be different this video centers around a woman in the UK. Yes, the woman in the UK. Um, her name is Rebecca Collins. Um, I'm gonna talk about this video. I'm gonna talk about her um, and how important it was to her. Um, question you know you could be like because before I go on I never left Florida I only left Florida twice to go to Haiti when I was really young so I didn't go to Europe to meet this girl so if you're expecting an interesting story I'm sorry it's not gonna happen um back to the topic at hand um how did I meet Rebecca Collins is very interesting. Um, this was back in 2008, the beginning of 2008. Um, during this time, as the new year rolled by, I had a terrible falling out with a woman by the name of Kama Jones, who will be a part of the series um, today. But going on to Rebecca, I had a falling out with Ken, and I had this idea of just wanting to talk to any girl like her just because I just needed to talk. I needed a conversation. I need to feel something. I don't know what it was, but I was depressed. I was down. Not depressed, but I was really down because now, you know, I lost the one girl that I could probably talk to for a while. Um, with, Re with Rebecca, I, I, I met her through a social media website. This website is also known as iMeme. Now, if anyone that does, anyone who doesn't know what iMeme, iMeme is pretty much a social media site that was dedicated to nothing but music. It's nothing like the sites people use to listen to bootleg music. You could download certain content, copyrighted or not, you can download certain content, you could look up certain content, you know, you could dedicate certain things. It was a page or you could have a music page. Whatever the case was, it was a place to get music. There were certain albums that was playlisted, a lot of stuff, you know? That's just what it was. And I managed to make a lot of friends who liked anime on there. That's the funny part. You know, I made a lot of friends who had anime and all this nonsense. You know, my anime thing started in 2008. Now, I watched anime when I was younger. But I could probably tell you Dragon Ball, obviously. Pokemon. Uh, Naruto. Yu Yu Hakusho. You know, shit that was on Cartoon Network or Adult Swim. Hey buddies, look at the ducks. You know, 
I used to watch, I, I, I got into this stuff, but I never got into anime the way my brother got into anime. So when I actually started following groups dedicated to anime, that's when my anime knowledge started to expand. Instead of watching what my brother watched, I watched my own anime because it was just that easy. Bit across the street before the light turns yellow. But I got into a lot of anime when I was young. This was the time I was starting to get into. My taste for anime started to pretty much evolve in its own right. This is the time I discovered what hentai was. I never knew what hentai was until my brother brought it up to me like, dude, you know, this is a porn playlist. So I got into that material. Whatever the case was, I ended up making a lot of friends, a lot of Naruto fans. During this time, Naruto was like big, big. I'm talking big. Naruto came out in 2006 and Naruto blew up in 2007. You know, but unfortunately, you know, the tsunami situation kind of hurt the cartoon and a lot of the internet streaming. But Naruto was like, this was right when they aired no more episodes of Dragon Ball. GT was officially ended. They aired all the episodes then. Then they also aired all the original season, the first two seasons of, Dra of the Z series with the Saiyan Saga and the Namek Saga uncut because now Cartoon Network was able to own it and they're able to remaster it unfortunately without Bruce Falconer and during this time just like they aired everything that was as Dragon Ball as Dragon Ball can be all the episodes was aired and remastered remastered and done but after that it was a wrap no more so Naruto took that place because Yu Yu Hakusho could have but couldn't hit the pinnacles that Naruto hit. Naruto hit that plateau and Naruto was that anime that was showed a lot. On, you know, so during this time people were big on Naruto. They were huge into Naruto. Um... So, I met a lot of people on I mean that had Naruto playlists like this. Crazy. Me, being the thirst bucket that I was, trying to find someone to replace, you know, Kama, I ran into this British girl by the name of Rebecca. Now, what's interesting, I met a lot of people from other countries. There's a chick named Marjorie from, I believe, Russia. Like a lot of people, I, I, a lot of people, I met from all shapes, besides black, gay, I, I met a lot of people, you know, and and I, I just met them. I met so many. I'm, I'm, uh, ooh, start. I, I just said something to trigger myself. So, um, sorry. But I met a lot of people, you know. Um, and I met this woman by the name of Rebecca. Begin to the conversation. She, at the time, was going through a depression. Out of respect for her, I'm not going to say too much. But, you know, this woman was really depressed. If I thought I was depressed, it was because of a girl. But this woman is literally depressed like empty you know she's even like admitted that she's been very down on the dumps I meet a guy there by the name of Chris as well who will roll into play soon I meet a I meet him I meet him and He's been pretty cool or whatnot. You know, I tell him the situation I was going through with Kama. And... It, it, it just, he... You know, 
you know, he's he's like, I wish you the best, and blah, 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 we were talking. Usually when I get in conversation with him, he feels like crying, or he's done this. Like, depression is really a serious thing. I don't care what any I want to be positive people will say. It's easy for a guy, you know, it's easy for people to say, oh, he's always depressed, he's always depressed, he's this, that, and the third. Yes, I get it. Certain people need to fight through that. You know, it's it's a cycle that needs to be fought. You know, what I mean, it's hard. It's, it's you, you can fight through the cycle. You can pray about it. Be, depression is a hard battle to fight. You know, I can honestly say I went through a really, 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 really deep depression around 2014-2015. Like, I was going through a really deep depression. Um, I will mention it in one of my videos down the road, but right now I was just going through a bad depression. Um, around 2014-2015, it was a huge depression. Um, so I know it's hard, and so it doesn't help when people are like, you should be happy. He's always upset. He's always sad. Okay, here's the thing. Just don't invite him. You don't have to rip the guy apart because he already feels like shit. Making him feel like shit because he feels like shit doesn't help. You know, that makes no sense to me. You know, making a depression person feel bad for being depressed makes no sense. I understand distancing yourself around certain people because they're depressed i have no problem with that you know but understand that it's not easy i understand you could do so much and they can only get out of the hole themselves it makes sense to you know kind of let them do their own thing but you never make someone feel bad for being depressed i would never make someone feel bad for being being depressed i don't care you know because it's hard because when these people eventually get back up they know what you said they know what you said so um i met this girl rebecca who was depressed and going through some stuff and this guy chris you know i was chilling with him talking to him on the internet having fun meanwhile me and, me and rebecca have this nice wonderful friendship rapport it's amazing i like it it's awesome. All of a sudden, you know, I'm having a conversation with Chris, and he's like telling me, he's like, you know, he's talking to you. He's like, hey, I'm talking to such and such. He sees Rebecca's photo, and he's like, dude, you should go for it. And I'm like, I should? He's like, yes, you should go for it. I'm serious. You need to. This girl is right for you. So I did. Um, I did. I looked at her photos, and for some strange reason, I developed a attraction that was disguised as a crush. I thought it was a crush. I was just really attracted to her. Because I thought we had a lot in common. You know, we talked about certain things we could relate to, certain feelings, clumsiness. It's just like, we had so much. But the problem came when now I started pursuing her. And it just seemed like I was just going after her because. And she started getting turned off. Ultimately, I said, hey, why don't we just do something? You know, you ever thought of being together, hypothetically? And she's like, yeah, but you're far away. I was devastated. But I tried to stick around. And the more I stuck around, the lamer the conversations got. Where it just turned into the whole, oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, or I would go online and say something she's like this is a term British people this is a term people from the UK say 
I would say something that would offend her, and she was like, dude, you're taking the piss away from me now. I never got that term, but it's a, it's a UK term, apparently. But, I, you know, I just got to the point where I start making her feel bad about herself, and I don't know why, but, you know, when you're depressed, as I used to make her happy. Now it just seems like we're just going through a routine. It really sucked. Like, ultimately, it really, 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 really sucks that these things would happen. But one day, you know, we would do this whole thing on... We would talk through Yahoo Messenger. In case anyone's wondering, we would talk through Yahoo Messenger. Then eventually, I would do the whole thing like, oh, hugs you. She just hugs you. Then I tried to sneak my way into a relationship talking about kisses you. And she's like... I kissed you. Are you okay with that? He's like, oh yeah, um, I can't really do that since I have a boyfriend. I was crushed. I was legitimately crushed. I mean, crushed. Because it's like, she was single at the time. How could this happen? Sure enough, Chris, the guy I was talking to, finessed his way into the relationship. And I guess they could relate. I don't know what the case was, but... It was painful to watch. You know? And they were dating each other for a good moment until later on that he just became unresponsive to her. I mean... I don't want to say he killed himself, but I don't know what's happened to him since, but yeah. Ever since then, it just, it just sucked, but I really, I really like, I really like this woman. Because we could relate to so many things. She was from England, B? Um, but ultimately, it didn't work out. It didn't work out, it didn't work out, you know? And... It, I was more depressed because she had a boyfriend, so I stopped talking to her for like a good summer until this, uh, like, the rest of the school year I was focused on myself. I wasn't trying to talk to her. I had made friends with another woman with no intentions of being with this world, you know, I was just, it was just nothing but a friendship, you know, and, hey, you know, it is what it is, I accepted what I couldn't change, and that's just what it is, you know, so, Sorry about that. All day. <laughs> yeah, all day. So, ultimately, you know, things just couldn't happen. I talked to her again somewhere around August, and you know, it was nice, but once again, same conversations, you know. I knew. I knew what I could, I, I, I ultimately knew, you know, that nothing could happen. So as I go in my, you know, yeah, we were friends for a little bit, but like I said, we was only so long to tell. So, you know, I wish Rebecca Collins the best, you know. She seemed pretty cool, and, you know, this is just one of many. I mean, I have people tell me, you know, I've never been into an actual heartbreak, whatever. I haven't been in a relationship, I haven't been in love. Whatever the case is, I don't know, but this is my personal heartbreak. And who knows, until then, this is how I feel. Yeah, this is Shake Master J. Signing off one of many videos to come today. Um, 
I wish you guys the best, and I wish you guys peace, love, and prosperity, and signing off with a crotch man. Peace, guys.